A sunny beach, a perfect playground, or a slave market where children are for sale. We are talking about the possible loss of a generation here. The gap between wealth and poverty has created a cruel industry. There is not something like relationship or love. You call it a business. It is my body and it is your money. Where the child is the commodity. Bought and sold on an open market, sometimes by people they love. Among the animals, it is only as the human who don't seem to care or to protect our young ones. I will never like any girl to have like my problem. Kenya's Indian Ocean coast, a paradise for honeymooners and holidaymakers, is also a trading post where children are bought and sold for sex. Some of the one million tourists who visit Kenya every year don't come to appreciate the game parks or to enjoy the beach and the ocean, but to have sex with children. Here, hiring a child's body is easier than renting a car. Child sex tourism is rampant and has been for a number of years. But it has grown over the years because tourism is also growing. Studies show figures between 30 and 50,000 children involved in child sex tourism, uh, aged between uh, 10 and 17. In resorts like Mombasa and Malindi, the trade in children is so rife that some hotels now warn their guests about the problem. It's a time bomb. It's getting worse and worse. Children are getting involved in, in the trade and they're not only coming from Mombasa, some of them come even from the neighboring country. We have Uganda, Tanzania, and even Rwanda. The prospect of tourist cash lures thousands of children, some orphaned by HIV AIDS, to Kenya's coastal resorts, where they end up destitute and vulnerable. There are children who travel all the way to Mombasa and Malindi. Some of them have been lured about better opportunities and they end up uh, being uh, sexually exploited. Then there are those children who've gone there by themselves. There are also children who come from within the coastal region and their parents seem to tolerate this kind of practice. Joyce is an orphan who was brought to Mombasa by a relative who promised her a job. She was 12 when she went to work as a prostitute. She's 14 now, HIV positive and still working. My auntie organized a client for me and uh, because she already took the money, so I had to go. So it was very nasty, but I had to do it because uh, I was sent inside there, the room. So it was painful, I was crying, but I had to do it. I normally start by at, at 5 p.m. I start by taking shower, then dress up, find something to eat. Then by seven, I'm already out. So sometimes you can spend the rest of the night out, but you don't get even a single coin. After darkness falls, the flash market, like the tourists, moves from the beaches to the clubs. This is the part the travel brochures don't show you. Child brothels are common all along this coast, and they're tolerated by the authorities. They're often run by women called aunties. Agnes is one of them. Agnes says she's doing them a favor. Agnes 
kutafuta wazungu. Kwa sababu wazazi wao walishindwa kuwatekea, walishindwa kuangalia mpaka wakakimbia long distance kuja kwangu kwa sababu ya shida ingekuwa kwa wanaangalia vizuri hawangi toka kule wakaja kwangu. Grace Achieng rescues child prostitutes. She was a sex worker herself until 2005. Now she persuades around 20 children a year to leave the sex trade. Lakini ukipata kama kama hivi akikubali yule kukupatia pesa, si unaweza kufanya kitu. I ask her what else she can do. She said she came to Malindi 2 years ago. She has not saved. Even if she would like to do something like business, she don't uh, she don't have money. Some of them are trafficked. We have those children of sex workers who stay, stay with their mothers and they are trained by their parents. And then we have children who get into sex work due to poverty. Mary works the local tourist beaches, even though she is five months pregnant. <laughs> Rose works the same beach. Her mother has been selling her to clients for between seven and fourteen dollars for the past five years. Ani namse damangu kuzam kuzamnas. Wale ani wale wateja mama angole mbwa na wale wateja mama ngapo na kudaku mamnas pad. Ndo na nipati ya mama gundo yon panya dilu kwa ona nipati ya pes. A lot of time, really, the victims uh, don't have any protection from their immediate family. Either the parents died or maybe even the parents are the ones pushing them out to find some kind of uh, mode of livelihood. The reason parents sell their children's bodies is often economic desperation. I wouldn't say it's a culture, really. It is uh, just a survival tactic. We've realized that uh, it's very difficult to penalize people. Girls, you go out to a sex trade with approval from their parents. So then how do you arrest it? It's just by creating awareness. It's by improving the way of the families. 50,000 people fight a daily battle against poverty in Tudor, one of Mombasa's biggest slums. Guda Brighton works door to door, persuading families not to prostitute their children in exchange for food. Those old men take advantage of them. They can give out something every day. They can buy them potatoes, they can buy them chips, they can buy them sodas. And in that situation, in return, they have to have sex with them. Claire's family were hungry, so she sold herself in exchange for food. <laughs> Nikifanya mambo ya ngono unapata pesa. Nilikuwa nanitishia. When this man could sleep with her and give something to the, to the mother. Not that the mother wasn't aware. She was aware, but because she was getting something every day, so she could allow the issue to go. Poverty is pushing millions of people across Africa's borders in search of work. Children are part of that migration too. Ruth was one of them. When my father died, my auntie was beating me a lot. When she started saying that, you know, we can go to South Africa and we can get a new job. The auntie trafficked her thousands of miles, hoping to sell her in South Africa. Police stopped them at the Mozambique border. But they didn't rescue her. They tried to rape her. Auntie said, no, no, we don't have money. They said, okay, if you don't have money, give us the one girl. Now my auntie said, what? Take her. My thought, I was so scared. I was so scared. So they said, okay, if you don't have money, remove your clothes. So I said, why should I remove the, my clothes? Will you give me another clothes? No, they said, you just remove your clothes or I will shoot you. So I said, I'm not removing. Another man came from my back and put it here a knife. 
They took me to another room, to the boss room. I said, you girl, you're a very bad girl. I started screaming, screaming. When he was opening his belt, the phone rang. And he said, I have to go. I'll see you later. Ruth managed to escape the rapists, but was caught again and held captive for a month before running away. I was so scared when I was told I'm going back to Kenya because I thought maybe my auntie can come again. Maybe she'll find me. She was returned to Kenya and now lives in an orphanage in Mombasa. They were so nice to me, yeah. They just talked to me very kindly and then I got used to them. They're like my parents, like my family. I said to myself that I'll start a new life.